Ladies and gentlemen, during this workshop we are going to talk about a method uh, for motor unit number estimation. These methods are called Muni methods and I'm now only going to talk about the so-called Munix method with some background and some uh, theoretical discussions and also a practical video. The methods are called Muni and the particular one that we are going to talk about here, my son and me, is Munix. The principle is that we first record a compound muscle action potential with a surface recording like we do in neurography. Uh, this uh, signal is the sum of all motor unit potentials. We analyze the amplitude and the area of the signal and then we obtain individual MUPS in different ways and try to estimate the average amplitude and area of the MUPS. And then we obtain the number of MUPS by dividing C map amplitude with MUP amplitude or the C map area by MUP area or other descri mathematical descriptions of the C map. C map descriptor divided by a similar a descriptor of the individual motor unit potential. And the different methods uh, have been developed. The first one was with slight increasing stimulation which was developed by Macomas and each step then represented the addition of one motor unit potential. Then we have multiple point stimulation where we move the stimulator or the recording a little to get different individual um, um, motor unit potentials. We can also use the F response or the spike triggered averaging and there was a statistical methods by Daube and now we have this Munix method that we are going to discuss in this workshop. And the principle for Munix uh, is the following. Record the C map and record surface EMG first very slight activation and then stronger and stronger uh, which is representing individual or summated motor unit potentials. And then we try to compute the uh, number of motor units by taking the C map divided by the individual MUPS we get here. This is some error in this uh, technique and we do not want to say that the number that we get is an exact number of axons uh, but it is well related to number of axons and we call it index, motor unit index. So first we record the C map and it's important to get the full stimulation strength. You see here how we increase it and obtain the highest one. And then often we have to readjust the position of the uh, electrode to get the maximal C map. And the other is to record the surface EMG potentials. It, this is called the surface interference pattern half a second epoch and we take a relatively strong activation, slight activation, stronger activation, less activation and so on up and down so, so that we get many force levels uh, during 20 such recordings. We don't need to have a long pause between each of them but can do that pretty fast. And then there is a mathematical uh, way to extract the number of motor units from this and there is no time here to discuss exactly the mathematics but 
we take this C map power divided by C map area divided by the surface interference pattern power with the surface interference area and then we get the N the number of motor units for that given uh, strength of force and here is the example when we have a very slight force it is nearly a correct value we get nearly individual motor unit potentials so this is a good uh, uh, value that we can obtain here and then when we uh, have stronger activation we get more and more summation and here we uh, could uh, see that the M uh, Munich's value would be very low and very low and therefore we take different uh, strengths and we'll get uh, a possibility to make an extrapolation to a situation where we have the really slightest activation and in this case we obtain a Munich's value of 181 which corresponds to if the activity was just 20 millivolt milliseconds and you say why don't we use this directly well these are the low threshold motor units and they are not the same as the high threshold motor units so this mathematical way is a better thing and here in other words with increasing activation there is an increasing summation if summation signal is used for calculation we get erroneously low Munich values and therefore we make the calculation from uh, many uh, short segments at various degree of activity and here is the practical example what it looks like in an EMG machine this is now seen in at least three different EMG equipment we obtain the C map we have the voluntary activation this is an example of relatively strong activation and this dot is here and then if we make less activation we get this dot or this dot and so on and then the machine is calculating the theoretical value which is uh, here when we have a uh, surface EMG interference pattern of 20 and here the Munich was 216 here's another machine where we have the maximal C map and the many different epochs for analysis and they are plotted here and here we reach 20 here and 108 or 100 is the uh, Munich's value we have looked at different aspects of this method for example by repeated studies in the same uh, healthy subject here's the APB and you see when we do repeated studies there is some variation and here we have four different subjects 150 150 and so on it, it varies one test was even 250 and one was 140 and so on there is a variation of 21 percent in this subject 19 percent 16 11 and here is uh, one from uh, another author where we have the first and the second test and you see in the normal that we have a relatively good uh, correlation and reproducibility in a patient it was also relatively good 15 to 20 percent reproducibility in healthy and 20 to 25 in pathology the reference values also change with age as expected different for different muscles but the normal values uh, are reduced with in uh, higher ages another way is that we look at this motor unit size 
by dividing CMAP amplitude with the Munich value. And when we look at the statistics, the uh, CMAP amplitude and Munich are well correlated, but the size of the motor unit potential is not correlated to the CMAP. And then you say, well, why do we need to have a Munich if the CMAP is so well correlated? And here we have the CMAP amplitude in uh, patients with ALS, and here is the Munich value. And you see there is a correlation here, but you also note that here we have normal CMAP amplitude, 6 millivolt, 8 millivolt, uh, but the Munich value is abnormal, it is low here. So this is a situation where we have re innervated uh, motor unit potentials that are large and therefore give a good CMAP, but the number is reduced. And this is the good thing with the Munich, that we can detect the reduced number of axons also when the CMAP is normal. Here is a situation where we follow patients over time uh, it, and we have um, connected all data from one patient with, with lines. And you see how the number of axons dis uh, disintegrate with uh, time and one can follow the um, effect of possible therapy and so on. Here is the background data to such uh, a serial study. Uh, this is the same patient four times at 0, 5, 8 and 12 months. And you see here slight activity and strong activity. This is nearly normal. And with time the individual motor unit potentials become larger and larger. And they are also fewer and fewer. And that can be seen that the Munich value goes from 132 to 50 and the mu6 value go up from 88 to 226. Motor unit potentials become larger and larger and fewer and fewer. There are a number of um, pitfalls in the uh, technique, like in all other techniques, we have to be careful with good signal quality. Uh, and uh, examples here are submax that we can pro have problem if we do not have uh, a maximal nerve stimulation strength, if we have stimulus artifacts, baseline shift, and so on. I don't go into the details here. They are written in guidelines that we have. Um, published. Now we are going to discuss some practical rules as a summary. First of all we must optimize the CMAP amplitude and sometimes we have to uh, do a repositioning of the electrode uh, a few times. We should not calculate Munich if the amplitude is less than 0.5 millivolt. It is a good tradition to check temperature and have a warm hand and warm foot before the recording. For example 29 centigrades on the back of the hand and 27 centigrade on the back of the foot. The epochs of the voluntary activation should be uh, long enough uh, to be representative. So we prefer longer than 300 milliseconds uh, and uh, usually 500 milliseconds. We usually record 20 to 30 such uh, short epochs and it takes a few minutes as you uh, have seen. We record the uh, activity during uh, low, medium and strong effort uh, alternating 
between the different uh, situations and we uh, keep the force constant during the recording and if one of the dots is way outside the uh, correlation line then we shall um, check the quality of the recording and if necessary skip uh, the uh, bad epoch it can be due to an artifact and finally we should exclude such uh, recording epochs that have an irregular uh, pattern for example due to tremor or baseline shift or um, solitary uh, other artifacts and the practical rules here are uh, in detail seen here but also I refer to this uh, guidelines it's called multinot number index guidelines for recording signals and their analysis by the authors that have, have been working the most with this technique this is a demonstration of how to make a Munich study on the Sierra summit we start by selecting the Munich program muscle side and click OK the procedure window contains a series of predefined steps to be performed to complete the study in this muscle. The first step is to ensure correct temperature in the studied limbs. This can either be done using the built-in temperature probe or by manually typing the temperature. The temperature shall reach the green area to be OK. Press the F1 function key on the control panel to move to the next step in the procedure list. Next step is to record the maximal motor response in the selected muscle. It's very important to have optimal electrode replacement and supramaximal stimulation. All traces are shown during the recording to ensure that the optimal response is obtained. When the motor response has been recorded, remove the stimulator and keep the recording electrodes in place. Next step is to record 20 surface EMG epochs each 0.5 seconds long at different levels of activity. The ongoing surface EMG is seen to the right. The x-axis in the graph is activity and the green dot shows current EMG activity level. The blue bar is a target activity. Instruct the patient to adjust the force level and try to hit the target. When the green dot is close to the target, press F1 to save the recording and move on to the next activity level. When three epochs have been recorded, the Munich's power regression line starts to build up. Ask the patient to relax before making a recording at maximal activity level. Then make the final recording. The recording in this muscle is now completed. The Munich result values seen here. And that is the motor unit count value on the y-axis where the interference pattern area is uh, 20 millivolt milliseconds. The motor unit size index, mu6, is also calculated. That's it. The study in this muscle is completed. A new run in the same muscle or a new muscle may be selected.
The advantages with the technique is that it is fast, less than five minutes, no needles, minimal stimulation is produ producible and can be used pretty well to monitor changes over time. And the negative things is that we require a voluntary muscle activation from the patient. We cannot use it in unconscious patients or difficult in ICU. We can have volume conduction from other uh, muscles during both electric stimulation and voluntary activation and that the mathematical model is not uh, so easy to understand but we just uh, have to live with that. And the findings is that Munich's value vary among different normal muscles. The uh, normal values are reduced with age and it's also reduced in patients with neurogenic disease and they are useful to follow disease progression.